Okay, um, so Christine asked me to talk about my DNA journey uh, today, and um, it's a long one. And uh, basically, I've been doing family history probably since about 2005. But uh, I first tested my DNA about a decade ago, just over a decade ago in 2010. Um, this story is a little bit different to other people's stories about um, discoveries. It's more about what I haven't found and the lengths I've gone to not to find it. So um, when I started DNA, um, I did, did my first DNA test. I've been researching, as I said, for about five years. And I thought I had a theory about one of my ancestors, George Courtney, who many people will know because I talk about him regularly. Um, I thought I'd found him and um, I did a DNA test to prove that I was right. Little did I know. So this is all about my DNA journey. We're going to talk about uh, more things than George Courtney, but really at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, it's all about George Courtney. So this is my um, pedigree when I first started, uh, when I first did my DNA test back in 2010, I'd researched most of my lines and I had gone back to second grade grandparents and further on some of my English lines. Um, and um, I, I had a grandmother who was illegitimate and I never really actually thought I would ever know what um, her, who her parents were or her father was, I should say, and um, any of her ancestors. But I, I tested mainly around George Courtney. So his name is actually um, Arthur George Courtney in the 1871 census, but I call him George. And the reason I call him George is really because that's how his wife uh, refers to him. There's actually only one um, primary record for George, George, in, and that's the 1871 census. It's a bit hard to read there, but it says Arthur G. Courtney. Uh, he was from Middlesex uh, in England, born in Middlesex, and he was at uh, Woolwich, Kent, at the time of the 1871 census um, with uh, his wife, Abigail, their uh, daughter, Edith, uh, Abigail and Alberta, who were twins, and only uh, says they're one month old, and Anne Muggeridge, who uh, was a nurse in attendance. Now, this is the only record that exists for him, really. Um, he's actually mentioned in the birth certificate of, the, of his daughter, Abigail Courtney, and referred to uh, by his wife as George William Courtney. So I'm assuming he probably went by the name of George because that's what she called him. And the only other reference is a death certificate of Abigail, um, his daughter Abigail in Australia, given by her, her grandson, James Roberts. Um, and so, and he calls him there, George Arthur Courtney. So is it George, is it Arthur, is it William? Who knows? So my primary theory in 2010 was this one, uh, this George um, Courtney, who lived in Sussex, Hampshire. I'd researched loads and loads of um, George Courtney's around this time, but this is the one I settled on after getting certificates of lots of people. Um, and really, I thought I had it worked out. And the reason I thought I had it worked out was that he, he this George Courtney is the only one I could find that wasn't in the 1871 census, but was found in all the other censuses. And uh, the other evidence I thought I had was a bit circumstantial that a Abigail's sister Harriet had moved to Southwick, Sussex between 1861 and 1871 and after she married James Titheridge. And it, that, her residence was only about five minutes walk away from George's and his parents. So I was thinking that perhaps Abigail might have met him somehow due to that. The other thing was that James has an aunt uh, named Titheridge who was married to Richard Hinksman, a gentleman, and our, the Courtney, Abigail's family is also connected to that family um, and she, through her second great grandfather, but that would be the same. So the Hinksman would be a relative for Harriet as well. So, but for over 10 years, I've been looking for matches on this family line, but I haven't had any order same, same or matches in that time. So I gave up about this George Courtney and I'm continuing to look at lots of other George Courtney's. So when I first did my DNA test, I did the autosomal test looking for George, of course, but I also did the MTDNA test, which is the microchondrial 
uh, line for the female line. So this is showing my female line. And um, we were haplogroup J1C5. My mother was a very big fan of Richard III and was very disappointed that after she dies, a couple of months after she died, we found out that this is the maternal line for Richard III. So she would have been quite chuffed about that. But in all this time, I haven't had, I've, I've had, only had 13 full sequence matches. Some haplogroups seem to get lots and lots of matches, but I've only got 13. Um, most of them seem to be coming from um, County Mayo and uh, our Mary Sweeney, she did come from County Clare. So we're sort of generally in the right area, but I haven't been able to connect any of those lines. I have developed an, a tree on ancestry, which you can see there at the MTDNA line, where I put in all the lines of um, the people I match and hope that uh, one day they'll join up. But I think that's a, uh, uh, a bit of wishful thinking. I find that the MTDNA tests, they're very expensive and I don't think they're very useful for a shipping, a fishing ex expedition and they're best really used to test a theory. So just a little bit about all the DNA tests that I have undertaken. Well, when I started in 2010, I just tested myself, but I very quickly realized I needed to test my mother. And I tested her at, um, at, at all the sites. We're, we're both tested at Family Tree DNA, 23andMe, Ancestry and Living DNA. And I've uploaded our results to my heritage. But we really needed to have more people test as uh, most of you would realise, to be able to sort out our matches and to uh, sort things from one, one, whether they're paternal or maternal, by having more people to test. So over, over the years, I've got all these people tested at, at family tree DNA and uh, had Y-DNA tests on a couple of the uh, male lines. Um, and also um, a lot of mum siblings have also tested. Over time, I've had lots of close matches that have helped me to use the DNA segments of those matches. So if you don't have people to test, um, the more matches you get, the more information you can use to actually help you determine some of those things for yourself. On my paternal side, um, I'm an only child, so I didn't have anyone to test. My, my grandparents were all deceased. My father's deceased. He had one sister who had no children. So there's no one there on that side. So I had to sort of seek out third cousins on that paternal line and encourage them to test, and which I have done uh, over time, including a candidate for my grandmother's line, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, Interestingly enough, my father's side, uh, there's lots and lots of people out there that who are matching me. I get a lot more matches on his side of the family, probably because um, they're early South Australians compared to my mother's family, who whilst her maternal side came out in the 1830s, her father did not come to Australia till about 1910. And I've, um, I've tested lots of other people who haven't matched me or my family, disappointing. So about 2012, I um, decided to do some Y-DNA tests and I started out by seeking a cousin on my paternal side, which is my coat line, and also got my uncle to test for the male line, line on my mother's side, so her father's line. So on the coat side, we've had lots of interesting things. I've managed to be able to DNA confirm um, by testing two different people from two different lines in Australia. Um, John Coat, who is the immigrant ancestor from Somerset. So we all match there. But when we go back further along the line, none of our matches are to in coat people. We have lots of matches at the YDNA. 111 markers and the big Y, suggesting that our, our name is either Coat, Bennett or Lock, uh, a big group of Bennett's, a big group of Locks, and the three Coates people that I have in the mix. Uh, most of the, uh, the Bennett's all relate to uh, Henry Bennett, who came to the US in about 1654. And the Locks all go back to a, a fellow who came to Philadelphia in 1695. All of them have Somerset roots, um, which is where my, my coat line comes from. And uh, we commissioned a study um, some time ago 
to uh, find, get some more information about where, where perhaps the origins of our, uh, our line were. And it suggested Burnham on Sea, which is only a few kilometres from um, uh, Huntsville, which is where my Coates people came from. Um, one of the things about um, the um, Y-DNA that we did for my paternal line is a um, very interesting marker that uh, meant nothing to me, and it still really doesn't, DYS393, is apparently quite interesting because um, it is uh, a, a marker that not many people have, or not many haploid groups have, and uh, it suggests uh, links to the Anglo-Scottish border and the Roman invasion. So this is suggesting that perhaps um, some of those people might go back uh, to be, be Rome, as part of the Roman invasion, which was quite interesting. Um, some of the family stories we have um, in our family was that we are linked to the Coates Cotton people in Scotland, um, but we've got no people in the Y DNA. Uh, survey yet that come from there. So it'd be interesting to know if any of them tested whether we actually matched them. So that's an ongoing work in progress and we've established a separate uh, YDNA project to try and work on um, fleshing that out a bit more called the Bristol Channel uh, Project. So if you've got any ancestors in around that area, please join us. Um, mum's line, mum's father's line, I'm starting to think Edward Roberts 1868 was immaculate conception because really I, I don't have any, hardly any matches to anything on his side of family. Uh, there is a bit of doubt about his birth. Uh, he was born in England, um, but in most, most records say Westerham Kent, but I was unable to find a birth certificate. And uh, one census suggests he was born in India. His parents didn't marry till 10 years after he was born, but he was living and um, going by the name of Coates uh, when he was three. But uh, his father was never living there in 1871. He was actually elsewhere. So who knows whether he was a permanent, you know, whether they were actually living together at that time or not. Um, and um, as far as why DNA matches go, we, we virtually had nothing. We had one Roberts match at the 12 marker level with anyone who knows anything about uh, why DNA knows that those matches are, are really hardly worth anything. Um, and at the 25, 37, 67, 111 markers, even by 2021, 20, we still had no matches, not one. So zero matches at any of those other marker levels. So. God knows where we came from. I've got no Indian uh, ethnicity, so it can't be from India, but it could be a British soldier, I su suppose. But still, you'd think I'd still have some matches somewhere. Um, when we uh, did the big Y test in 2018, we managed to get one match uh, into 2020, um, but that's to a tailor in the USA, and I've, I've not been able to research anything to suggest that uh, it connects to our line. And on the autosomal front, the, we've only got one seven centre Morgan match going back in the lines that I've researched in England uh, for the Roberts, his, uh, Roberts's line. And I don't think that's enough to hang my hat on that he's, I've got the right father. So is my research right? Have I got the right father? That's the big question on that line. So back to autosomal testing. So um, by 2015, I've tested at all these places. And in particular, Ancestry came out around that time. And um, I started to realise that I probably would be able to find my paternal grandmother's father through DNA, particularly at Ancestry. So, so I was starting to get a number of matches that I couldn't identify that were in the fourth cousin range. Um, and so I started in earnest researching that line. And many of you have probably heard me talk about this in, in other forums. I have managed, by 2017, I've managed to um, identify. Um, potential candidates for my mother, my grandmother's father, Henry Fred and uh, Otto, family money's on Otto, um, but uh, really I haven't been able to identify which one it is. So I, but the good thing is that I have um, identified uh, the line that it comes from and I'm very satisfied that I know who uh, his parents were. 
but I'm still looking for George Courtney. And Edward Roberts still seems a bit of a problem. So by 2018, my two key goals are, all, are, are about finding mum's second, second great grandfathers, or well, they're actually her great grandfathers, her two great grandfathers. Um, on the George Courtney front, who is he? What man, you know, have I got the right bloke? Uh, and Edward Roberts, is my research right? Or is it the fact that there's not enough DNA floating around to prove that line? So when you look at um, uh, mum's um, pedigree there, and that's the pedigree going from her father, Ted Roberts, um, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, female lines up there, Anne Lorne and Abigail Pace, I have lots and lots of matches going back in time and going back many generations, proving that, um, that, that that is correct. But on the father's line, it's a bit of a problem. Um, Edward Roberts, have I got his father correct or is it someone else? Um, Edward Roberts, 1841, was, as I said, living uh, nearby, but not living with them in 1871 when Edward, 18, too many Edwards, Edward, 1868, was three years old, but he was going by the name of Edward Roberts. So it sounds like they've been together, but they didn't get married till 1878. So um, why was that? And George Courtney? My, my primary candidate that I originally identified back in 2010 had actually married three times, not to my Abigail, because I haven't been able to find a marriage for them either, um, but none of those three marriages um, produced any children. When you look at mum's um, ethnicity, and this was in 2020, um, pretty much, um, doesn't tell me anything really that I can go away and research 50-50 England, Wales and Ireland, Scotland, which accorded pretty much with what we knew about her ethnicity. Her father was born in England, born, um, came here in 1810. He suggests his father was of Welsh origin and with a name like Roberts, I always expected that to be the case. Um, and her mother was predominantly English and French, French but they have suggest, he does suggest perhaps a touch of Irish. And I've often thought that perhaps George Courtney is Irish as well. Her mother was a second generation Australian and lots of Irish there, a little bit of English, we think. Um, but that comes out, seems to come out in those ethnicity estimates of Munster. Um, by 2021, however, she's getting more and more Scottish. Now, at the moment, I have no Scottish ancestors at all in our tree. So perhaps George or and or um, Edward uh, have some Scottish uh, roots. Um, of course, uh, I do have Northern Ireland people who could have originated in Scotland, accounting for some of that, but it wouldn't be anywhere near uh, 48 percent. So I'm thinking the English and uh, Northern Europe is probably mum's um, paternal grandmother, great grandmother. Uh, and the Irish is mostly her maternal side, but where is the Scot Scottish side? Perhaps I need to be looking more for Scottish um, matches to answer my question. But where is Wales in all of this? I think it's probably tied up in Scotland. So the Roberts could still be coming from Wales, but I haven't been able to get them out of Gloucestershire. When we look at mum's ancestry matches, she, she continually doesn't really seem to get as many as I do. Um, she, you can see there that she has 98 starred matches. I use the stud matches to show how many people I've identified as uh, with the most recent common ancestor. So I know where they fit into my tree. Um, and when you look at mine, I've got 241 shared matches. So some of those would be part of um, the mum's 98 being my maternal matches, but um, the majority is actually paternal. So I managed to split those up and you can see there that I've got 71 maternal where I know they fit in, but and 178 paternal, 170 paternal for my father's side. So 
much more um, focused, I think, ancestry with the Australian um, background. And most of those 71 maternal matches for mum are actually um, mum's uh, maternal side, which came to Australia very early on. So I think half my problem is that the, perhaps there is not enough DNA floating around. Um, my, my grandfather had a brother, but there's very limited um, people um, available uh, to test. I've actually tested, uh, my grandfather had uh, seven children and I've tested four of those and two of the grandchildren from a different sibling. I've managed to test uh, one grandchild of my um, grandfather's brother, but there's, uh, there's only one more person in that side that possibly could test for me. I have asked him several times, but I still haven't got a positive response. And on the uh, Roberts Laundon side, um, Anne Laundon, who um, was, um, had uh, some half sibling, had some children to a prior. The reason they didn't get married until 1878 was that she was already married. And she was married to a fellow by the name of James Baker and had three children. But there's no, uh, doesn't appear to be much issue from, from that. Um, I have got some matches on that quarter line, but they don't help me with the two paternal great grandfathers. Um, so a similar issue for the Courtney Pace side of the tree um, and no one really on that side. Um, Abigail's sister, Edith, I thought there might be some descendants, but it turns out that Edith is actually um, illegitimate and probably not a child of George Courtney at all. So wouldn't have any of the Courtney DNA that I'm looking for. So in this case, we're looking for second great grandparents for me, uh, presuming they had no other children. Um, and so DNA matches to help me on these lines are going to be back beyond third cousins uh, and much smaller matches to have to deal with. But traditional research and genetic research go hand in hand and I'm constantly um, um, building my tree. You can see here, I have a tree this is actually a family tree maker view, but I have a tree on Ancestry called Gene Monkey, which um, has 15,000 people in it. And that includes direct line and some, uh, and DNA research. So you can see I've done a lot of extra floating branches in there, I've got 10,000, <laughs> nearly 10,000 extras that aren't actually direct, uh, directly related to me. Um, Abigail did, I've, I've got lots of Courtney's in my tree because I, as I mentioned earlier, the Hinksman uh, on Ab Abigail's um, maternal side, Abigail Pace's maternal side, she actually has a, is a fourth cousin once we've moved to a William Courtney of Chill Bolton. And uh, Chill Bolton, this uh, Chill Bolton area has fascinated me for quite some time because we have lots of matches to Silas Cole, the convict and I can't work out where they fit in. Um, and he's uh, the Coles Bay, famous for, they named Coles Bay in Tasmania after him. So that's an ongoing work in progress to work out how Silas fits in. But um, I also have a Courtney tree with another thousand odd people in it that are loose. Uh, uh, I've actually researched virtually every living, breathing George Courtney that ever existed, I believe, anywhere in the UK. Now, in 2008, uh, I, th I mentioned earlier that I had identified who I thought was uh, George Courtney's family before I actually tested. And that's them there, George Courtney, 1842, and his father, George Courtney, 1809. So one thing I wanted to say was about through lines in ancestry. You need to be a little bit careful about through, not through lines because I'm now being delivered with this fellow, George Courtney, as my potential ancestor. And the reason for that is I had them actually connected as parents in my tree back in 2008, because I thought I'd actually cracked it. And then of course, you know, lots of people copied it. But by about 2014, I decided to detach them because of a lack of DNA matches. But not, 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 no one followed me in that regard and, and detached them from their trees. So they're still in there, 
um, and ancestry is now giving them back to me, trying to make me attach them again. But I have no DNA evidence, so I'm not going to do that until I've got some DNA evidence to suggest that they, they might be. And I've got some unusual names back in the line. Um, so uh, um, I'm pretty confident that it's probably not them. But um, when you look at through lines, you know, it says there that I've got three DNA matches to this um, in this through line. But when you look at the through lines, it, the DNA matches are, are actually descendants of my grandfather. So they're not DNA matches that would be of any use to me in terms of confirming this. So I find that through lines is a little bit misleading in that regard. So just be careful of it. The other problem with through lines is these little um, blue dots that uh, show that DNA matches exist. So I'd said to you earlier that on the Edward Roberts line, my mother's other great grandfather, we had no matches on, on his side of the tree. But looking at this, you would think we did because there's lots of those little blue dots there. The only match I have is one way out to um, John Bayliss and Mary Churn, which is a seven centimorgan match. And it doesn't show the DNA match because even Ancestry thinks that's too distant. Uh, if I had a triangulated match with that couple, I'd be happy, but just at Ancestry, it's not enough to go on to say that I've got a confirmation along those lines. And you can see the orange um, DNA symbols I've got through there showing that I have got a tentative match, not a confirmed match. So my current position still in 2021 is that I have no real matches on either of those great grandparent lines. But on the other lines, you can see that there's a lot more matches. And in particular, um, the maternal side of mum's tree, she has many, many matches on those Irish lines. And um, and um, this is just ancestry matches. So I've got lots more matches in the other sites as well. I then use, I've also used clustering methods to try and find some of these ancestors. And some of you might have attended uh, the session I did on uh, Jim Bartlett's walking back the clusters, but I've applied the leads method and the walking back the cluster method. The problem is, as I mentioned earlier, is that mum mostly has matches on her Irish side. And you can see here at Ancestry, of all the matches that she's got in the close range, she's only got seven third cousins and they're all maternal. And most of them, six out of the seven, are on her Cassidy line and one is on her Murphy line. So that doesn't help me too much. When I did the leads process uh, back in 2020, or might have been earlier than that, uh, identifying unknown groups. I've got lots of unknown groups and, um, and I've subsequently worked out where a lot of them fit in, but I can't connect them to my tree. So uh, some of them I've got connections within the group, but can't connect them to my tree. Eventually, I hope they'll all map, match up. So that was the walking back the clusters um, presentation that I did back last year. It, was only, it seemed like a long time ago, but it was only May last year. And uh, in that, in that um, process, I identified 71 clusters that um, um, she had. And I decided back then in April, 2020 to focus on 21 of them because uh, 15 I, I had identified were unclear and six, I did had no idea where they came from. Um, I've been continuing to work on those clusters and you can see there from that little graph uh, down in the bottom right hand corner, um, I've slowly uh, <laughs> worked out that there's even less um, um, clusters on the Courtney Pace line, which is the blue and uh, some of those were actually maternal. So they've gone into that other section. So, um, and um, so I'm still focusing on the orange and the green ones, hoping that, um, sorry, the blue and the orange ones, hoping that they will give me more information on those, uh, that side of the family. But that's a work in progress as well. 
these are some of the clusters that I've found within each of these clusters uh, and the names. And these are actually in my tree. So I re re look at um, these clusters and try and remember these names because I think as Ian said, you forget about what you've looked at um, in the past, particularly when you've been at it for 10 years. And so you need a, a process to be able to um, recognize um, clues if you get them. So I have these little documents where I put all this cluster information in so I can look at the names that are here and they're in that tree at Ancestry so that if I come across matches that have these names in their tree, I've got a starting point. So where can I go to now? It's back to chromosome analysis. And this is a complex technique called visual phasing. So I've undertaken visual phasing. I think I mentioned that um, I have uh, tested four of mum's well, mum and her three siblings. And this is an example of a segment, um, chromosome seven, of where you can look at the grandparents' uh, inheritance. And this is Abigail Courtney, the daughter of George Courtney. And I'm mapping her segments because She's the only uh, person that um, would have uh, segments coming from, you know, George Courtney and his wife, uh, e, um, Abigail Pace. And so these blue segments that are shown on this map um, could be George segments or they could be Abigail. So I'm working through all the chromosomes to try and have a look at those segments and sort out which ones are Courtney and which ones are Pace. And so that's a long involved process, considering we all have 23 chromosomes. And with that information, I'm putting it into DNA Painter and um, mapping the known segments. So you can see there that I've got some segments that are mapped back to Sarah Skates, Isaac Pace, Sarah Cade, et cetera. And then I'm mapping uh, triangulated groups and the uh, segments that are coming from each of the siblings so that I have a ref one single reference point to go back to. So the goal of this is to uh, move all the known maternal segments of Abigail into the maternal side and what's left has to be paternal and belonging to George Courtney. It's a long process and hasn't got me anywhere yet, but I hope that'll achieve something one day. I do have some promising clues. Uh, you might recall back in the very first, one of the first slides, I mentioned that um, Anne Muggeridge was in attendance at a, on the 1871 census. I have actually found through this process on that there, I have two first cousins, not two first, they're first cousins to each other who um, have connections with us on chromosomes 3, 9 and X and go back to the ancestors of James Rudd and Anne Webster. And Anne Webster is actually Anne Muggeridge. Uh, she's married twice, Anne Rudd, Anne Muggeridge. And also at Ancestry DNA, there's a cluster that I have that goes back to the same family line. So I wouldn't have known about that had I not been looking at clusters and matches within clusters. And so um, doing a bit more research on the Ancestry DNA clusters and some of the people in that cluster um, I've found another Webster line. So I'm thinking that perhaps this is a clue for that line, for that particular cluster. My latest clue, which is uh, very exciting, is I had my cousin, first cousin uh, test. Her father has tested everywhere for me, but not at Ancestry. Uh, sadly, he died just before he could do the test. But uh, she has, has one unknown group with 38 people in it. So I've been very excitedly um, work, trying to work out whether it's on her maternal side or whether it's on our side of the family, um, because we match on her father's side. Um, but uh, I found two people who match to this Courtney O'Brien couple. Unfortunately, um, the O'Brien is a very common name in, um, in Ireland, as we know. And, um, there are some Cassidy's and uh, um, Maguire's in these matches as well. So it could well be coming from the O'Brien side, but it was promising to see two matches that hooked up to a Courtney O'Brien couple. And that's an ongoing work in progress to 
hopefully um, see if I can find more connections. But my gut feeling here is that it's going to be an O'Brien connection. Um, one of the things I've just started um, is a blog uh, all about finding George Courtney, and I'm using it as a research um, uh, log, I suppose you might say, to summarise everything I've done. So I'm doing posts about the traditional research as well as the genetic research um, so that I have a one-stop shop to go back to to look at what I've found. And by using labels in the blog to record surnames, hoping to find connections easily um, on different, on different um, potential matches if the name seems familiar. But it's not all about George, of course. Um, I have had some successes. And many of you have heard me talk about um, my Britain family and finding the ancestors of uh, the name of my um, second great-grandmother, Catherine Britton, who in all the records was unknown Britain. And also, as I've already mentioned, um, my great, my grandmother's father. And finally, a um, success about on my Sweeney line, another of my Irish lines, where um, I have lots of matches to lots of Sweeney's, but all we know is Ireland and uh, have never been able to connect them. Well, this was a success story in that I had all these um, matches uh, connecting to various Sweeney's. And when I arrived in Ireland, I was speaking to a researcher and uh, she said, oh, I thought uh, your John Sweeney might have married again to this woman and um, gave me all this information. And it turns out, oh, I said, oh, yes, I know all those people. <laughs> I've got them in my tree, but I don't know how they fitted in. So the genetic research actually paid off and she was able to give me a whole lot more information about some where the Sweeney's have gone in US and England and other places. And that's another ongoing work in progress. So that was quite good. So your research can get you somewhere in the long run, even if you have an extra 10,000 people in your tree like me. So, so here we are still into 2021. I'm still looking for the two great grandfathers. So some advice, verify your pedigree. You, you need to have a solid base. So why I'm being so fixated on the two great mum's two great grandparents is that I believe that you need to have each generation at a time verified before you can move on and, and confirm generations further back. It's exactly the same as traditional research. You have to start at the beginning with yourself and keep going back in time as you verify each step of the way. So I'm still no closer to working out the origins of George Courtney, but I'm going to continue to work on my clusters and through ancestry DNA groupings to try and use tree, tree, tree triangulation to give me clues and to identify triangulated segments at uh, the other sites. Um, and that's not all about my Courtney nemesis, George. Um, I'm also continuing to map all my gene genome uh, which I find is you know, very therapeutic and good fun. So I encourage you all to do the same. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Veronica. Um, well, they've got lots of comments. Um, I think along the lines you need, leave no, leave no stone unturned. Um, and I think it's really... <laughs> You know, very good for us because I know people there. I think they're researching back in the 1700s, 1600s. But uh, it's all right if you want to do general history research, but until you've proved your pedigree, as you keep telling us, um, you can be researching anyone's tree, not necessarily your own. 